Number one, the two ways that we pray the will of God in the place of prayer is number one, by praying scripture-based prayer. You just write scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. I made a statement earlier on and it's time to bring it balanced that just because you found a scripture does not mean you are in the will of God. That is true. But generally speaking, when your prayer is word compliant, you must find a scripture according to the written word. Are we together now? A scripture that supports, this is how the technology of heaven works. Just saying, God, do it. You said it. Where? Where? He said, present your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reasons. Are we together now? When Blind Bartimeo, you notice Blind Bartimeo never said, Jesus, have mercy on me. He said, thou son of David. Jesus understood what he was saying. You have a covenant with David. There was a covenant that God had with David. And I'm standing to invoke that covenant. The woman in Luke chapter 12 who had suffered the issue of blood, he said, is this ought not this woman? Being a daughter of Abraham, there is a basis. Not just that she has suffered 18 years. She's a daughter of Abraham. And I left Abraham a promise that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And part of the component of that blessing is wholesomeness. Wholeness. So this woman's state is a demonstration that God is not faithful. And when Jesus saw it, being the express image of God, he had to change it to represent the will of God correctly there. That was the basis for her healing. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Scripture-based prayer. It is the reason why believers must be equipped with sufficient understanding of Scripture. So that in the place of prayer, you pray with authority, knowing that the written word of God has a very rich capture, a rich expression of his will. So for instance, you are praying and trusting God for healing. Just saying, God, heal me. I know, are you not powerful? Don't be watching me like that. That is sympathetic prayer, but it is not fervent. It is not effectual because there is no scriptural basis for your demand. You see how we pray. An average believer prays this way. And not to be sarcastic, but just quite honestly. Father, thank you. The whole preambles, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the rose of Sharon, king of kings, lord of lords. And once we pass that, then we go straight to the fact that God, I'm here again. Is it that you are not, you cannot hear me? You are hearing this one. You are doing this one in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you now, you, you know, and so on and so forth. And then just because we say amen at the end of what we're saying honestly it may be sincere prayer but as matured believers we must learn that not every kind of prayer god is almighty but he has bound himself to the operation of his word it is the reason why as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man there was a protocol he had to submit to until man was redeemed because it is written that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And God who created man and created the law submitted himself. Not even him could cast away sin from man. When you understand this about God, that God did not spare his own son. He also allowed him to submit to what the word said prophetically. That must be the condition for redemption. If he did not spare Jesus, God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He's called compassion, but he's moved with his word, by his word. To be touched does not mean he will just act. He is touched. And when God wants to help you by being touched, he sends you his word. Is someone learning now? Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. Scripture-based prayer. That every time you are praying, making your petitions, you take the time as a responsible believer to find scriptures that supports that which you know God wants to do in your life. Blindly assuming that God, you said you will prosper me. God, I know you. You are too good to allow me this way. Those things are very sincere, but you will not get results that way. Are we together? Number two. 
The second way we pray the will of God is by praying in the spirit. Engaging the wisdom of the spirit in praying so as to birth the will of God. This is very powerful. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 when you read 26 and 27. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Likewise, he says, the spirit helpeth in our infirmity. What is infirmity there? Contextually, the word infirmity there does not mean sickness. It means limitations by reason of wearing a mortal body. We are limited in our understanding. We see in part and we prophesy in part because of that limitation. Now, there are three dimensions of God's nature he did not share with man. I don't have the time to explain this here, but it's important for us to know. When the Bible says we are partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his nature he gave man. I hope you know that. There are certain dimensions of God's nature that are exclusive to him. Three of them. Number one, his omnipresence. He did not share that with man. Number two, his omnipotence. The ability to be all-powerful. And then number three, his ability to be omniscient, all-knowing. These three dimensions of God, he did not share with man. They brand him in a class all by himself. Are we together now? So man is not all-powerful. Our power is derived. That's why we have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. God does not have authority because authority demands that you must be regulated. Every time you give a man authority, there must be a system above that man that supervises the management of that power and authority. Are we together now? Yes. I know the Bible says all authority has been given. Notice Jesus is speaking as a man. All authority. Authority is given. It is not derived. It is given. Given by one higher than you. God was willing to submit if he found someone greater than him. But he did not find any. And so that's what makes him all powerful. You get it now? Yes. Demons have power, but they do not have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. An armed robber has a gun. A military man has a gun. They both have power, but one has authority. That's why he will not be jailed for shooting. The other guy does not have authority. Are you getting the point now? Believers were not just given power. If the only thing God gave us is power, we're in trouble. It means we operate just like demon spirits. What gives us an edge is that we have authority. Is the reason why he honors us when, we, when we, we make declarations in the spirit. Because we have power and authority. How did I get here? Praise God. Are we together now? Yes. This is important. Praying in the spirit. So the Bible says we're looking at Romans chapter 8 from verse 26. The Spirit helpeth our limitations. What is the limitation? We know not what we should pray for as we ought. This is the limitation. This is what the Holy Spirit helps. That there is a deficiency in all men by reason of wearing a mortal body and by reason of the fallen nature. That we do not have accurate perception of what the will of God is in all matters. This is why God gave us the Holy Spirit to become that advantage to that limitation. Then the Bible says, whoever is aware of such a limitation will now recognize that the Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The next verse please, 27. The Bible says, he... He being the spirit that searcheth the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints. How? According to the will of God. So the recommended approach to pray over a matter where the will of God is not clear is to pray in the spirit. And that the Bible says there is a transaction that happens when you pray in the spirit. Eventually, the spirit of God, who is also the revealer of the heart of God. Are we together now? 
he will meet you at the point of your passion where the will of god is revealed then on the basis of scripture we can pray and make petitions with authority knowing that this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything when i'm praying for the sick I don't verify whether it's the will of God. It's been established from scripture. By his stripes we are healed. He is called Rapha. Are we together now? I am come that ye may have life and to have it more abundantly. That is sufficient basis for my confidence. So when I minister to the sick, I minister with confidence, not in my own sufficiency, but that the words of God, his promises are yea and amen. This is what gives us confidence to pray and to minister by the Spirit. But then there are matters in life and destiny. Where should I be? Where should the church be planted? Are we together? And all those kinds of things. It is not directly written in the Bible for you. Even though when the Holy Spirit gives you his word, you will find a scripture that relates to it. So what you do is to engage in the Spirit. And continually engage in the Spirit. You are doing two things in one. One is you are already communing with God according to the will of God. But number two, because you are the one who needs to act out his will, the Holy Spirit will search the mind of the Father and transport to you the will of the Father for your destiny. You don't stop praying until the knowledge of the will arrives. That was the goal of the prayer. At what point do you stop praying in the Spirit when the will of God concerning your life is revealed you don't stop praying when you are tired you don't stop praying after one hour or after five hour what governs the prayer is not chronological time what governs the time is traveling until the knowledge of the will arrives if it takes 21 days you keep going if it takes two hours you keep going you see that now mechanically selecting time for your prayer it may help you in terms of giving you spiritual discipline but there are times for many reasons that i may not discuss here you will need to travel when a woman goes to the hospital to give birth she doesn't give the doctors two hours she goes there knowing that her goal is until the child arrives sometimes she gets there and in 30 minutes the child is out but there are times she's there one week she stays patiently with the confidence that my goal is to birth this child how about the time she's carrying twins? How about the time she's carrying triplets? Other women may come and go and leave her there because of the kind of thing she's birthing. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. Most believers are sincere and passionate, but they do not respect the will of God as a vital component in prayer most people will not understand the advantage god gave us in giving us the holy spirit and giving us the prayer language it's been an age-long argument as to whether praying in the spirit in tongues as we know is necessary for believers it is because we do not understand the way the kingdom works that as compassionate as god is he only acts with respect to his will God bless you for listening to the sermon. If you're here to give your life to Christ, say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and surrender my life. Wash me clean. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for my sins and rose on the third day for my victory. I believe that in my heart and make confession with my mouth that Jesus is my Savior and Lord. God bless you. Congratulations. You are now free.